If you're looking to get into flying FPV drones, you've basically got three main options. You can go all in with something like the DJI Avata 2. You get the goggles, the controller, it's all ready to fly. But that will cost you around £1,200 in the UK, and that's about $1,500. The second option is to buy a bind and fly quad, add your own goggles and transmitter. That's a little bit cheaper, maybe 75% of the cost, once you've added in all those little bits and pieces that you need, but you still need to know what works with what. And the third option, well, just build your own from scratch. It's the cheapest, but also the steepest learning curve by far. So what if you want to get started without spending a fortune and getting lost in forums, hundreds of YouTube videos and firmware? This, the Protoss FPV drone ready to fly kit from Cadex FPV promises exactly that. For just $395, you get the drone, the goggles, the controller, the batteries, everything you need to get flying. It sounds like a great deal, but is it any good? Let's take a closer look. Hello, and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. So that's what you get in the box, the drone, the goggles, the controller, the batteries, the charger, and even a nice carry case. And it looks like an incredible deal, especially for anyone just starting out in FPV. But the real question is, how well does it fly? Is the video any good? Does the controller work properly? And how beginner friendly is the whole setup from binding to flying to charging? This is a compact 2.5 inch Cinewoop style quad. It's got these ducted props, which make it sort of ideal for flying indoors or tight spaces. And it comes pre-built and pre-configured with an Ascent Light VTX. So you're getting a full HD digital FPV. It's not analog. It's 1080p or 720p at 60 frames a second, which is actually pretty impressive for the size of quad and camera. The power options are 25 milliwatts or 100 milliwatts. You've also got a small manually adjustable FPV camera front here. Just move it around like that. And it's pretty well protected in the frame there. And this frame is all plastic, all injection molded, and it feels like it's pretty tough. There's a built-in ELRS receiver and it runs on these proprietary 2S LiPos. And you get three of these in the box and you get a charger, although the blurb on the website says only the first 200 customers will get this included for free. And under here, this feels like a metal heat sink. So I assume that's where the VTX is actually mounted inside this frame. It's very light at around 104 grams all up. That includes the battery and it's reasonably rugged and looks like it's made really for beginners bumps, you know, walls, trees, that sort of thing. But more importantly, everything's ready wired, configured and ready to go. Everything's bound out of the box so a beginner won't have to get into all the complications of the RC and the VTX binding. Under here, there's also a couple of optical flow sensors which are used for their loiter mode. Basically, that means it'll behave sort of like a GPS drone, but it uses these downward facing sensors to hold it in one position in a hover but this is only really for indoors, and I'll cover that a little bit later. Next up, we've got the controller, and as you can see, it's a gamepad style transmitter. It's running Express LRS at 2.4 gigahertz, and they call that A-Link ELRS. So you're getting low latency, long range, and full compatibility with other ELRS, 
if I could say it, other ELRS gear, ELRS gear down the road, you could probably even bind your own ELRS transmitter if you want. There's a built-in rechargeable battery, rechargeable using that USB-C charge port underneath, and it connects to the drone right out of the box. Like I said, no binding and no flashing is needed. And these sticks, well, they sort of feel okay and are apparently hall effect, and you get all the other buttons on here. So that's your arm button there. This is your flight mode. So you've got loiter, you've got angle and you've got acro. Uh, that's the buzzer, which is done through the motors. And there's various other button combinations that give you tricks that you can perform. Next, you've got the goggles. And these are what they call their ascent goggles, which I think are a development of the walk snail goggles and their HD digital goggles running on the avatar system. And the display in here is 720 or 1080p at 60 frames a second, and looks to be where CADEX are heading with their digital VTX and goggle system development. And they come with the antennas already installed, presumably some patch antennas in the front here. It's got a built-in DVR fan to stop the misting up on here. And they're pretty compact, they're fairly lightweight, and you've got this foam face pad around the front here. And you'll see in a minute when I turn it on, there's a great big orange LED across the front here. And you also get a slot there for your micro SD card for recording your flights in HD. Remember though, the drone itself has no onboard recording. You can only record the DVR footage. And you power these, from this battery, which is branded CADEX F FPV, as you'd expect, which has got a little, if I can get it out, it's quite tight, an XT30 with a moulded cover on there, and there's a DC 5525 barrel connector on there that just plugs into the bottom here. All very simple. Getting the batteries in and out of this is a bit of a mission. They're a really tight fit, so they're not going to get ejected during a crash. And they snap in very nicely. Just put them in like that, and it turns on. But they are just really, really hard to get out. You have to bend up this bit here, and that bit there, and you really have to give them a tug. Ooh, come on, there we go. Now, like I say, this isn't gonna come out if you crash, but I just wonder how long these tabs will last, to be honest. And as you saw, when I turn it on, I get these flashing purple lights. Then if you turn the transmitter on as well, it takes a little while to fire up and I suggest that you start it in loiter mode which is that switch all the way forward like that and when it's connected it goes orange and that tells me it's in loiter mode and then if I switch between the different modes blue is angle mode and that is acro mode and I'll talk about those again in a minute and to get this fired up all you have to do is press the arm button and the props will start and it will let's turn that around that way and you need to push the throttle leaf halfway up bit of a tight space for doing that you saw it takes off and hovers around not so great over this but it's really good over carpet now CADEX FPV stress that loiter mode is really for indoors. Now it will work outdoors if it's not too windy, but over grass it does wander about and if you yaw around it sort of wanders all over the place. So as CADEX say, loiter isn't for outdoors, but you know, I had to give it a try. Now the goggles can be a little bit weird to turn on. I think it might just be me, but who knows. So got the battery here and you plug that barrel connector into the top there nice and easy 
And the way I found to turn it on is you press the button on the battery and that shows you the state of charge and then you long press it. There we go. The goggles fire up. And I can hear Yeah, I can hear that the fan has started. As you can see, you get the orange light across the front. It's just a little bit odd. Now, for me, the goggles are a little bit uncomfortable and it's very front heavy with some small light leaks around the foam pad. Now, of course, this is very personal and others may find that it's not the same sort of fit. It's okay, it's not too bad. Just for me, it's a little bit uncomfortable. And this display is very nice. It's crisp and you can access the menus for the settings like power, brightness, all that sort of thing using these controls on the side. You've got a long button there to actually turn the menus on and off, a little joystick control like that and a back button. This button here is for playing the videos that are stored on the DVR. This is quite a hard one for me because I'm not a beginner, so it's quite tricky to be truly objective. In angle mode, I found this a little bit hard to control. You need large stick inputs to get it moving around. It's docile enough, which is perfect for a beginner, but I'm really not used to having to push the sticks around that much. Also, if you take off in loiter mode and the throttle is about halfway, and then you switch to angle mode, the drone will drop or fly upwards quite quickly depending on exactly where the throttle is positioned. Now, I was ready for that, but a beginner will probably get caught out. So I'd recommend you set the flight mode before you take off and not try and change it mid-flight. Same goes for acro, although it doesn't seem to be able to switch to acro mid-flight anyway, which is probably a good thing for beginners. And in acro, it does actually fly quite nicely. It's a softish tune, but weirdly it feels a little bit twitchy, particularly in pitch, and recovery from a forward or a backward roll is quite hard to judge. It took me a while to get used to it, and at high throttle there's definitely some motor chirping happening, like the D term's a bit too high, but this is a closed system, and I can't get inside to tweak it like you would be able to in beta flight. Flight times, well, they're around five to six minutes, maybe a little bit longer if you're just cruising, but any acro or punch outs really brings that down. There's not a lot of power and it takes a lot of throttle to recover. The image quality isn't too bad. It's all a little bit fisheye and the colors are reasonably punchy and fairly well saturated, although I would say that the image itself is a little bit on the grainy side. I tried 720 and 1080, there's not that much difference. It almost looks like it's over sharpened. Now there are a couple of settings in the goggles so you can adjust this, so you can have high definition mode or smooth mode. But overall, I think this would be fine for a beginner. Part of the problem is that there's too much of a difference between the rates and the tune in angle mode than there is in acro mode. Maybe it needs an intermediate acro mode with slightly lower rates and another acro mode with slightly higher rates. I think the transition between angle mode and acro mode is just probably a little bit too much for a beginner. Flying indoors in angle mode is fine because the rates are low, but as I said, I found it hard because I'm not used to moving the stick so far to control it. Also, it's quite difficult to hold a constant altitude, and I think maybe the throttle hasn't been profiled. This was a test I ran to see what the flight time was. I hovered just out of ground effect and got around six minutes, maybe a little bit more, but when the battery goes, everything shuts down very fast if you're not keeping an eye on the battery levels. It cuts out with no warning and the drone drops and the video freezes. This isn't just the DVR stopping, it's the video transmission freezing in the goggles. 
Now, this kit is clearly aimed firmly at beginners who want to easily get into the world of FPV. And for the most part, Cadex has delivered. Everything feels well made. It certainly looks the part. It's solid. And most importantly, it works right out of the box. And you can be flying HD FPV with this in minutes. No binding, no flashing, and no soldering irons. At $359, it's an impressive offering for the price. And the inclusion of that Ascent HD video, ELRS, and even loiter mode shows real thought has gone into making this beginner friendly. And it's great value for a full HD FPV setup. It's genuinely plug and play, which is ideal for first timers. And this Ascent Light VTX and these goggles, they look very promising. And I'm excited to see how this whole system develops. And loiter mode gives beginners a taste of GPS style stability. And it's a good beginner flight mode. But this manual, it's a bit of a letdown especially since this whole kit is aimed at beginners and I couldn't find an official online version anywhere. I think some clear video tutorials or more importantly, some infographic style quick start guides would make a big difference for them. And these battery clips, well, as you saw, they are a little bit fiddly and feel like they might break over time with loads and loads of battery swaps. And one thing I noticed, the drone seems to have air mode enabled in all flight modes. And that makes the landing feel very bouncy. Beginners might find this a bit unnerving unless they disarm just before touchdown. And that's a skill that takes practice. And as I said before, there's too big a gap between angle and acro mode when you set it on the flight controller. A bit of tuning would help smooth that transition for learners who are ready to progress from angle onto full acro. And if you're a beginner who wants to get into digital FPV for the first time, this is a very solid starting point. There's a few rough edges, especially in the documentation and the handling quirks, but none of these are real deal breakers. And it may be I'm just being pernickety on it. But I think with a couple of tweaks to the tune and the support materials, this could become one of the best entry level kits on the market. And do let me know what you think of this in the comments. And if this video helped, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.